Hi everyone, uh, I'm Srivatsa Mahesh and I'm the CTO at Buffalo Extraction Systems. Today I'm going to walk you through our level 1 10 litre CO2 extraction system. This system is used to extract crude oil from a dry milled biomass uh, of either hemp or cannabis. The system has actually consists of mainly the extractors where the biomass is loaded into and the separators where the oil is collected in. Uh, let me show you how the extractors are loaded with the biomass. Typically these extractors can be operated or opened up with just one operator and uh, overall your biomass is loaded in here. in a polypropylene food grade bag. Uh, this bag actually helps in ensuring that your CO2 actually passes through all the biomass without any channelizing and the biomass that is put in here is typically of a 16 to 24 mesh size. By using a bag instead of a basket, you can ensure that there's a uniform distribution of CO2 through the biomass and you have actually a large enough surface area where the solvent or the CO2 gets in contact with. The CO2 actually that is used during extraction is a supercritical CO2 in that it is actually at a pressure of above 70 bar pressure and a temperature for about above 31 degrees Celsius during which it acts both as a liquid and a gas. Uh, its properties in actually flowing as a liquid help in carrying the oils and its properties in actually diffusing into the material make it act as a gas. The biomass is loaded in here and actually then your system is completely automatic beyond this point. Once you load your biomass, you close the extractor and from here on your actual process is completely controlled through the HMI system or the SCADA system that we provide. The CO2 actually passes through the extractor from the bottom to the top in a supercritical state and carries the oils with it. And from here, it actually goes into a back pressure regulation system, which controls the pressure of the extraction. This back pressure regulator is a servo actuated back pressure valve, uh, which is a pin valve that is controlled using a servo actuator and it ensures a precise control of the extraction pressure within a tolerance of about 2 to 3 bar. Once it passes through the back pressure regulator, the CO2 actually depressurizes and you can actually have two fractions of the separators to get a fractional separation. The first separator can be kept anywhere between the base pressure of about 60 bar up to 200 bar. And the second separator operates at the base pressure of about 60 bar uh, absolute. Your overall uh, extraction, when it happens, your oil and CO2 passes through the first separator and whatever uh, part of the oil, which is the fats or the lipids or the heavier molecular weight fractions, uh, fall down into this collection vessel and the CO2 passes up into the second uh, back pressure regulator. After it passes through the second back pressure regulator, it, the CO2 becomes a complete gas at 60 bar pressure. And so all your oils are then collected into this uh, collection vessels. Both of the collection vessels have a valve that can be used to open and collect the oils. But they also have a detachable bottom, which can actually be used to collect all the fatty parts and to ensure all the collection of the oil is complete. After it passes through the second separator, it passes into the water separator, which can be used to collect all the volatiles and the terpenes and the overall water from the biomass. And this consists of a uh, basically a, a mesh, which is actually that helps the condensation of the water onto into the separator. So the additional benefit of having a third separator also it helps the water that is extracted from the biomass doesn't go back into the recirculation line. Why this is important is that when you're actually pressurizing the CO2 up to 350 bar, the input, pre input temperature of the CO2 is between 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. And any variability in the input temperature could cause freezing of the water and hence you don't want any water in the input side. So it's very essential to have a third separator that removes all the water from the, uh, the oil or the CO2. 
Once you have your uh, uh, basically your uh, CO2 that gets out of the third separator, it goes back into a condenser which converts the gaseous CO2 back into a, a, a liquid CO2 and then is stored into a CO2 tank. From the CO2 tank, uh, you actually then cool the CO2 which is at the back there in the super chiller and the cooled CO2 which is at 60 bar pressure and uh, 2 degrees Celsius enters the pump which is at the back. So let's go to the back of the system which is actually the technical area what we call it because everything you see here is actually where the uh, biomass is handled or where the oils are handled. So you don't have any technical equipment like pumps or motors or anything that could uh, cause any contamination in your product on the front side. Before we go to the back, uh, I'll just show you the overall screen. Uh, the entire system is completely automatic in that the operator only needs to remove biomass from the extractor and load fresh biomass into the extractor. All the extraction uh, pressure settings, all the temperature settings of the separators and the temperature settings of the extractors can be set on your HMI as well as the SCADA system and that is automatically controlled by the internal utilities. In addition, the extraction changeover is also fully automatic in that an operator doesn't need to sit around closing valves or opening valves manually, but he has to just select an extractor on the, on the screen and the system will automatically change which extractor comes into operation and which extractor actually comes offline. In addition to an HMI which is used for basic operation, you also have a SCADA system which helps you record recipes and you can set recipes for different strains of cannabis, for different products, it could be any herbal product and each of these recipes can be pulled up and all the parameters that you set for them can be used again and again so as to create a continuity and robustness in the process. Let's go to the back where we have uh, most of our utilities uh, for this plant. Uh, all the HMIs like we said, uh, HMIs and SCADA systems as well as the system come in general is built as per GMP requirements and we provide documentation either as per US FDA 21 CFR uh, part 11 and 211 or EU GMP annexure 11 or 15. The system is completely CE certified in that all the pressure vessels are uh, PED certified vessels and they are uh, the, the control panel is conf conforming as per your low voltage directives. The pressure vessels are also ASME certified. That means all applicable vessels either are certified as per ASME Division 8 Section, uh, Div section 1 or Section 2. Now, this part of the plant is where the utilities are and uh, like I mentioned earlier, the CO2 that actually comes in from the tank is chilled and it enters into this single plunger pump which is used to pressurize the CO2 from uh, 60 bar pressure up to 350 bar or 400 bar pressure. These pumps are also available up to 650 bar pressure so if your product demands that. Uh, that has to be uh, des decided upon while before we actually get this plant in operation. In addition, there are a host of valves here which can be used for uh, changing the input uh, conditions that is which extractor should be open on the input side, which extractor should be open on the output side and which extractor should be vented out. That will help uh, in controlling which extractor is in operation and which extractor is offline. All of this, like I said earlier, is completely automatic. So you just need to select your extractor and the valves that need to open and close do so automatically. The utilities also include a host of uh, recirculation pumps which are used either for heating of a superheater or the separator jackets or cooling of uh, the condenser or the super chiller. So these pumps are also kept in a part of a utility. All the pumps are basically uh, past this glycol, which is the thermic fluid that we use through the condensing unit, which is the chiller. And this is located normally in your utility area again. Typically, you will have a partition between your plant and where your condens condenser is located. Uh, the condenser uses R404 as a refrigerant and can help in a very good control of the glycol temperature which in turn helps in controlling the CO2 temperature very precisely. 
in addition to this uh, what we also offer along with this system uh, let's go back into the front along with our offerings we also provide a completely automatic cip system which includes one hot water tank and one isopropyl alcohol tank this again is a completely automatic system in that you only need to connect the cip sid to the input output connections here and you just have to start the cip cycle for an automatic preset time of say maybe 2 hours of hot water and then 2 hours of isopropyl alcohol to ensure a thorough cleaning of the plant all the cip liquids that is be the hot water or the isopropyl alcohol once you connect them follows the exact path followed by the co2 so that you have no manual cleaning requirements all the uh, cleaning happens automatically and thoroughly in addition we also have a gas booster which basically serves two purposes uh, which is first to pull in the co2 from your storage tanks into the system and to then is to recover the co2 from a batch that is just completed so if you do complete a extraction uh, batch with extractor 1 and you start operation of extractor 2 this gas booster can be still used in while in operation to remove all the co2 from extractor 1 and recover it back into either the co2 tank or back into the co2 storage uh, which you will have at the back so this is a very good addition as it helps in basically minimizing your overall consumption of co2 gas and it helps in overall reduction of the uh, the venting out of co2 into the ambient air or into the atmosphere now if you do have to actually uh, vent out the co2 in addition we offer a co2 scrubber which basically converts all your carbon dioxide uh, into uh, basically a h2o Uh, which is water and ensures you are not letting any co2 into the air in a sense in states where you can apply for some sort of carbon credits this could be a great advantage as you can actually convert uh, input co2 that you've put in say 10 kilos of co2 and you'll have zero CO, zero kgs of co2 going out so in a sense you've actually got uh, an additional carbon credit just by operating this plant uh the complete system operates with three phase voltage and this can be customized as per the country requirements so for the us we supply it at about 480 volts uh, ac with 60 hertz uh and for india for example we supply it at 415 volts and depending on the current uh, country that you are operating in we can customize this uh in addition it needs a compressed air supply Uh, which would be typically to the tune of about 20 to 30 cfm at about 6 bar pressure and this will be dry compressed air for which you would need to uh, install an air compressor uh, and you will need co2 storage tanks uh, with some sort of a manifold and a pipeline that can be connected to the plant and new fresh co2 can be brought into the system for usage uh, all in all the system helps in a complete automatic stable robust operation which can ensure you have a continuity and consistency of extraction throughout your uh, production cycle i hope this has been of help to you for more information please do visit www.buffaloextracts.com